What is up, guys? Welcome back for week 10 of the Global Battle Association, the GBA. This week, we are taking on somebody that I've been wanting to play for a very, very long time. Tom. Tom Zian is uh, San Jose Sharpedos. Uh, big fan of hockey. Love uh, the Sharks. And uh, his team is modeled after the Sharks, so very happy about that. Uh, and um, Tom and I have uh, kind of been hyping up this game quite a bit. We both have the same record, 3-6, and six, uh, going into this game. And uh, our matchup is, is quite interesting. We both have things that absolutely destroy each other. Uh, I'm looking at his team and, like, Lando T, uh, Mega Houndoom specifically, Roserade. Roserade's the huge, huge one that destroys my team. And then I'm looking at mine and, like, uh, Megalopony, the right Scallopede set. Uh, Sylveon, for example, uh, can all really do a lot of work. Zoroark, too, like, spamming Dark Pulse against him is really, really nice. Uh, so, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of threats on both sides. I expect this to be a kill-for-kill -kill game, so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, first mod that I decided to bring... Uh, by the way, you guys do see the team on the right side. He's got uh, Lando T, Rotom, uh, Como, Scizor, Roserade, Swallow, uh, Meloetta and Rhyperior, Houndoom, uh, Mega Houndoom, excuse me, uh, Deancey and Masharna, Lando T and Masharna being a Zemons. So we do have uh, Megalopony here with... Uh, Limber, uh, we got 204 attack with an adamant nature, 228 in speed. This is enough uh, for, what was it again? I think it was uh, adamant, uh, it was enough for Rhyper, uh, not Rhyperior, sorry, Mega Houndoom. Uh, this is enough for a max speed Mega Houndoom. Uh, if his solo comes, I don't expect absolute max speed either. Uh, so there is that. Uh, it would either have to be Scarf to outspeed me, or uh, I just will probably outright outspeed it. Uh, then we have uh, Adamant 204. This is enough to 2 hit KO Defensive Lando after Rocks with Ice Punch. And uh, then we got uh, 68 in uh, HP. My moves. High Jump Kick, Ice Punch, Fake Out and Facade. So Fake Out and Facade are really, really nice against him. Uh, one of his best ways of dealing with Megalopony is to go into Rotom and burn me uh, and to Pain Split Up. Once I'm burned, if I'm statused at all, Facade destroys him. Other than Rhyperior, uh, Facade just runs through his entire team. Like, he, he has no switch-ins. The Ancy 2, I guess, uh, could be a decent one. Either one of the Rock types are his only switch-ins. Facade destroys everything else. Literally everything else. If Rocks are up, I'm going to Oko or 2-hit KO. Literally everything. So that's... Uh, that's looking really good for me. Uh, high jump kick is obviously to hit those rock types that I talked about, uh, as well as uh, it's my hardest hitting move if I'm not status. Uh, and then I decided to run fake out because fake out is a really good revenging tool against him. Things like Lando, uh, Roserade, and Swellow are pretty frail on the physical side. Uh, you get things like Meloetta, the Mega Houndoom if it's low, all of those things. So pretty straightforward. Reen uh, coming this week once again, comes every week. Uh, then we got Shiro, the uh, Scallopede. So uh, what I should have done... Uh, was run Aqua Tail a very, very long time ago in a different matchup, and I won't talk about that one, but uh, Aqua Tail uh, is, is looking really, really good this game, uh, especially with Water EMZ. He's got the uh, Rhyperior. Uh, after Rocks, even if he's Pasho Berry, max physical defense, uh, I have a chance to uh, Oko him with, uh, with plus two, uh, so there is that. And we got uh, the Mega Houndoom, the Deancey, uh, the Lando, all of which don't want to take uh, Aqua Tail. Everything else pretty much uh, takes Poison Jab really not well, uh, other than maybe uh, physically defensive Deancey can probably take it, but even that, I uh, got Aqua Tail. So. Uh, and then we got Mega Horn, that's specifically for the Masharna, uh, which I feel will come against me because of Lopany. Uh, and also, uh, it's for the, uh, the Rotom, because I can't knock out Rotom with plus two Poison Jab if it's uh, Max Fizz Def, but I can with Mega Horn. So there is that. And uh, after rocks, of course, always after rocks. Uh, and we got SD, of course, because uh, setting up on his team, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough. I gotta find a setup target, but uh, it shouldn't be too too hard. Uh, and the speed is enough for, uh, if I recall correctly, I think it was, I want to say Lando could be Meloetta. I think it's Roserade and Meloetta, the, that speed tier, uh, the base 90s. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm out speeding. Moving on, we got Chise uh, coming this week with a Charty Berry. I've got enough speed for Lando T. I hit 310 uh, at level 100, which means I hit uh, 158 here. So I'm just faster than Lando's 157. Also puts me faster than Rose and Meloetta once again. Uh, we got uh, Volt Switch, HP Ice, Defog, and Roos. I consider running Heat Wave because Scizor is a threat, but I don't think he'll bring Scizor against me just because of the Zapdos specifically. Uh, and the fact that I have a Mudsdale, it's going to be tough for him to, to set up. Uh, my Lodic as well kind of stifles him. So uh, there's a lot of things in his way with Scizor. Uh, so I don't feel like he'll bring it. I think Volt Switch and HP Ice is enough. HP Ice is for the Lando, of course. Volt Switch is for literally everything else. Uh, he's got a uh, Rhyperior. So I also considered running Toxic. But I felt like Defog was probably the best call, seeing that he does have Roserade and it can very easily spike stack me because it forces out like three of my members. Uh, being, uh, well, you'll see them in a minute, but 
Uh, I really feel like he might bring spike stack, so I decided to pack defog just in case. Uh, obviously, my rocks going up is pretty important, but his rocks uh, and spikes and T spikes going up is probably way worse for me. Roost is going to be nice against this team. Uh, allows me to roost in the face of things like Scizor and Roserade if it's lo locked into uh, Leaf Storm, for example, anything like that. Very nice. And uh, Volt Switch just gives me momentum into my, uh, my Lopany, man. Lopany uh, is, is looking really good this game. Uh, moving on, we do have Eric Mudsdale. I brought uh, EQ, Protect, Toxic, and um, and Stealth Rock. So this is our Rock Setter. Earthquake hits most of his team neutrally across. Whatever Earthquake can't hit, uh, I can hit with Toxic. And uh, getting Toxic off on his Mons, especially things like the Masharna, which is his uh, primary check to my Lopany, probably, uh, as well as Lando and Rotom, that's going to be huge if I can get off Toxics on those things. And then Protect is always a good scouting move for... Uh, I used to love running Protect, and I don't do it enough anymore. Uh, it's a really good scouting move for his uh, his Rotom, uh, as well as his Lando, for example, if it locks itself into U-turn, I can get up free Rocks or a free Toxic, anything like that. Uh, it's also really nice for getting Leftovers Recovery if I'm not status like with a Toxic on, on myself. Uh, and Stamina is really good against his physical attackers. I feel like Lopany is good enough to revenge all of his special attackers that Mudsdale can handle all of his Fizz attackers. Uh, and the only one that I'm kind of worried about is, is like Scizor. Uh, that's the only real one that I feel could give me trouble in terms of physical attackers. Uh, but uh, and because I'm mainly because I'm not running Roar, but I do have Zapdos. And again, I don't feel like he'll bring uh, Scizor as a result. Uh, so that's, uh, that's Mudsdale. Moving on, we got Asuna, the uh, Milotic. I got an Aya Papa Berry. Uh, the way that I designed this set uh, with the defense and the HP was to make sure that Como couldn't knock me out uh, after rocks with a plus one close combat or outrage. In fact, the amount of damage that it does to me puts me in Aya Papa range and doesn't allow him to KO me after. So it's very hard for his Como to get set up. I've got Miracoat, Scald, Ice Beam, and Recover. So uh, I'm also 52 Spideff with a Calm Nature, which means that I can take anything from Roserade outside of a Leaf Storm uh, from a boost item if it's not a boosting item if it's like especially defensive uh, roserade with leaf storm it can't even knock me out so uh mirror coat is a very very good revenging tool for both rotom and roserade his uh, another two of his good special attackers two of the mons that i feel can take advantage of my lotic uh and i've got ice beam on there once again for the roserade as well as the lando so i can get the immediate ko on it uh and the como to weaken it as i said this is like one of my main checks to como i don't really have much else for it so uh that's that's why i, I why i decided to run it this way I have competitive on here because uh, he's got not only the Lando with the Intimidate, but he also has, uh, for example, Energy Ball with Roserade. If he gets a special defense drop on me, I want to be able to, uh, to at least boost my special attack. Uh, that would be very nice. And uh, other things like Meloetta, Shadow Ball, and Psychic. Uh, it's got a lot of dropping moves, which can help uh, my lot of gain some special attack at the very least. Uh, so that's looking really good. Uh, and again, <laughs> I don't really need Marvel Scale against this team. Uh, outside of maybe Roserade's Toxic Spikes, but I mean, this is a mostly a special check uh, against this team. Like, it can really deal with the special attackers like Swallow and whatnot, uh, and uh, and Meloetta, so I don't think I need Marvel Scale, per se. Um, except if he runs Toxic on, for example, Rotom, uh, that could be a little bit problematic. So, anyway, uh, moving on. Our last Mon, this is the most interesting Mon. This Mon went through a lot of changes, and I ultimately decided on bringing... Assault Vest Zoroark. So, if you look at his team, once again, his special attackers, things like Swallow, Roserade, Meloetta, the, um, the Diancy, the Mega Houndoom, all of them don't Oko Zoroark if it's holding an Assault Vest. And I have coverage for pretty much everything. Dark Pulse hits his team really nicely across. HP Steel is there for the Diancy. Extra Sensory hits both the Swallow, uh, sorry, the Roserade as well as the Como. And Focus Blast hits uh, the Rhyperior and the Mega Houndoom. So I have pretty much something for everything, except again, the Scizor. So I'm so fixated on the fact that he won't bring Scizor against me, and it doesn't look that good, that I'm deciding to bring Assault Vest Zoroark. And this can really catch him off guard, because if he knows that I'm Zoroark, but he doesn't know my item, he might just attack me with something like a Roserade or a Swallow, and expect to KO me, where he actually won't. Uh, and that's pretty big. And I can also wear down Rotom with uh, with Dark Pulse with this with this thing. Uh, this is, It's mainly to catch Deancey, though. I'm going to disguise this as Scolipede, and uh, I'm going to... Uh, fire off a Dark Pulse initially. If he brings in Rhyperior, then I got off a lot of really good damage on it and opens up Scolipede for later in the game. Make sure that I don't necessarily have to waste my Z move on it, and I can save it for something like Lando if that comes. Uh, and then we've got... Um 
And if he stays in uh, with uh, De if he comes in with Deancey, for example, uh, if that's his rock type of choice, then I can HP steal it and two hit KO it. And in fact, uninvested Deancey with Moonblast cannot uh, Oko me after rocks. It does a max of like 85. So I can get the two hit KO with HP steal after uh, Dark Pulse. I think even if he Spatak drops me, I have a chance to two hit KO him uh, because I count on max special defense and it was a two hit KO. Uh, after rocks, so I'm pretty sure that I can get the uh, the two hit on him. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the team, guys. Uh, we're actually just gonna hop right into the game. I got it up for you. Uh, so this is a post com. Uh, we've got Megalopony uh, looking really good against this team. Tom decided to bring uh, Swallow, Como, uh, the Rotom, Roserade, Meloetta, and Masharna. So Masharna I expected, Rotom I expected, Como I did expect as well. Uh, Swallow I was a little surprised to see. I thought he would bring Lando over that. Uh, and Meloetta was a little bit surprising as well. I thought he'd bring a, uh, a rock type there. Uh, Roserade was definitely expected. It was the biggest threat to my team, in, in my opinion. Uh, and then uh, I expected Lando and one of the rock types instead of Swallow and Meloetta, so I was kind of surprised. Looking at this team, though, I'm like, he's got a lot of special attackers. He's got a lot of things that Zoroark can just deal with naturally because it is holding the Assault Vest. So I'm really, really glad that I decided to bring Assault Vest Zoroark. Uh, I'm also looking at Scallopede and how well it can do. Uh, as long as he's not running at, like, Max Fizz F Como, I can pretty much sweep with it pretty reliably, so that's looking good as well. Lopini also looking really good, but I think I'm going to need to get its status for it to do any work, because I expect the Masharna to be Rocky Helmet. That's what I saw in my uh, in my mocks the most. So if I can get uh, Lopini's status, that would be the best thing possible. So we're going to hop right into the game, guys, and you guys are going to see how this played out. So Tom is issuing that challenge, as, uh, as MV would like to say. Um, so we're going to lead off with Lopini immediately. Uh, I can go for the fake out on pretty much anything on his team and gauge damage. He's going to lead off with Swellow, and uh, so now there's a little bit of a mind game. Uh, this could also be Zoroark, and he has to keep that in mind. I did lead with Zoroark last week, disguised as, as Lopini against... Uh, against Wolfie, so, and I got an immediate kill as a result. Uh, so I'm going to Mega Evolve, and I'm going to go for the Fake Out. I want to see the damage on the Swallow, and I want to see if he stays in, because if he does, then he's more than likely Scarfed. So I'm going to go for the uh, for the Fake Out, as his uh, Rotom is going to take very little damage from this, so I do see that it is quite defensive, uh, and I do see the Leftovers as well. Now, my game plan against Rotom was always stay in, no matter what. If I see Leftovers, I'm always staying in, because I can get the uh, the status on my Megalopony. So I'm going to go for the High Jump Kick, do a lot of damage to his Rotom, and he is going to go for a Toxic. So Toxic is a little bit worse for me than, than Will-O-Wisp, obviously, because I'm going to be taking gradually more damage every single turn. So that's a little bit bad, but uh, at the same time, I think I can manage it. So now I'm looking at his team, and I'm like... Facade switches where? Uh, so he's going to switch out on this turn, and he's going to go into his Masharna. And uh, it turns out that this thing actually isn't absolute max defense. Uh, I thought this was a roll right here. You guys are going to see the Facade is going to do about 50%, but he's going to be over 50, which means I actually got a low roll based on his spread. I found out his spread after it was 212 uh, in defense with a bold nature and max HP. Uh, so that was a low roll, and I was afraid that I wouldn't kill, but I had to go for another Facade because I couldn't let this thing heal up and keep coming back in on my Lopany. My Lopany looked like my best uh, offensive win con in this game, so I'm going to take a lot of damage. I'm down to 47%, so now I'm going to have to switch out against whatever comes in. In comes Swallow, I calc specs Boom Burst against my Zapdos, and I'm like, okay, there's a chance it'll 2-hit KO, uh, but I gotta go into it anyway. Uh, Zapdos isn't looking too useful this game, so he's gonna go for the Boom Burst, and I'm gonna see the damage. He brings me down to about um, 110, 110 HP, yeah, exactly 110, and I'm like, okay, that's actually Scarfed. Uh, that is not specs damage, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to go for the uh, the Roost, and uh, in comes Meloetta, which I know that I outspeed unless he's Scarfed, so I can find out if this is Scarfed as well. Uh, right now, only his Masharna is down on his side. So I'm going to go for the Volt Switch. I'm going to get on out of here. I'm going to see the damage from the Volt Switch. I calced it before I clicked it. And I see that it does about 12, 13%. And I'm like, this thing is very specially defensive. Uh, I know that it's very specially defensive. Zapdos should have done more. So I'm going to go into my Lodic. He's going to go for the knockoff. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. I just lost my Aya Papa Berry. His Como is going to be a big, big problem for me. Uh, he's going to go for a U turn. And he's going to U-turn uh, directly, I believe, into Rotom here. Uh, and Rotom is now going to be a huge nuisance because now it can heal up. I know it's got Pain Split. There's no way it doesn't have Pain Split uh, if he brought it in like this. It's because he wants to uh, to be able to heal up on whatever I, uh, I decide to go into. 
I considered going into Lopany here uh, because as a result, I think uh, I would gain HP, uh, but Ronim's HP stat is really, really low, so I don't think so. Uh, I think I would have ended up losing HP anyway. Uh, I'm going to go for a recover. I just didn't want the uh, the Rotom too high in HP, but I'm going to go for the recover here. I want to be healthy, uh, and my... Uh my Milotic is now sitting at uh, 192 HP, which is really good because I can still take hits from that Swallow later because this is also pretty specially defensive. So I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go into my Zapdos knowing full well that he can Toxic me and that could be a little bit of an issue later. But he's actually going to go for the sub. And I see sub and I'm like, uh, that's not good. I'm in trouble <laughs> because whatever his offensive move is, uh, if, it's, if it's, for example, Hydro Pump, he can 1v1 my entire team. So I'm going to Volt Switch out. I know that I break the sub. Uh, and I'm, in fact, I am going to break it here. And I'm going to go directly into Scallopede because I feel like his play is to Toxic here. Uh, but he actually makes a really nice play and he goes for another sub. Uh, so as a result, I'm not going to have my... I'm not going to have uh, my Scallopede in for free uh, because I do have to break the sub first. So he's going to go for uh, for the substitute. I'm going to go for the poison jab to break his sub. I do calc it. I do see that it does break the sub immediately. And uh, we're going to break this thing. And if he decides to go for a pain split, uh, then I'm looking pretty good, which he actually does. He takes off a little bit of my health, and uh, I know for a fact that I can live anything but a Hydro Pump from here, including a Thunderbolt, uh, because he is defensive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for the Swords Dance, and it's looking like Scallopede can actually put in work uh, within the next couple of turns. So I'm going to go for the Swords Dance. Uh, as he decides to reveal his final move on his set. So we saw Sub, Pain Split, Toxic, and he is in fact Volt Switch. So this is fine. I'm like, okay, so he doesn't have Hydro Pump, uh, which is okay because he, the only way he beats my Muzzdale is by Toxicing it, but that's good enough because he has Sub. So that's going to look really bad. Zoroark kind of has to deal with the Rotom later. Uh, so I'm going to get the, uh, the Speed Boost right here. He's going to go into uh, Como. I'm at plus two. I'm going to go for the Poison Jam, and I'm going to see this damage. Um, it does like 45 uh, or like 48, I get the poison luckily, and he goes for a flamethrower, uh, but this Como is very, very defensive, uh, so I'm like, okay, well, I can't revenge it with Lopany, uh, Zoroark doesn't even do the trick with extra sensory, I'm gonna have to go into my Mudsdale, and I'm gonna have to capitalize on this thing now, uh, going into Mudsdale, I had the idea that he will probably go into Rotom because he can take advantage of me and I don't have rocks up yet. Uh, but in fact, Tom decides to stay in and go for rocks. I predicted the Rotom coming in and went for a Toxic. Uh, not so much the Roserade because the Roserade wouldn't want to come in on an Earthquake, uh, but Rotom definitely could. And uh, he's going to take enough damage to where now he's now in range of Facade, so I'm not as worried about this thing. Uh, and I'm just going to get up my rocks at this point uh, and really pressure his Swellow. Um, he's going to go for a Toxic of his own though. And that's going to wear down my Mudsdale, and that's going to be a little bit problematic. Uh, but I am going to take the uh, the Toxic just fine, and uh, I'm going to get up my Rocks. And now they're up. So now I'm going to go for an Earthquake, and uh, he actually reveals his next move on his set, or his last move, rather, because we already saw Flamethrower, Rocks, and Toxic. His last move is Drain Punch, which is going to put him back out of range of another Earthquake, I believe. Uh, actually, no, two Earthquakes still take him out even after two Drain Punches because I get the Stamina Boost. So I'll be fine. Uh, I'm going get, to get off an Earthquake. He's going to go down to about, I believe, 15% uh, after the Earthquake and the Poison. Uh, because he is physically defensive, he can take this Earthquake, even though I am a Mudsdale and very, very strong, regardless of no attack investment. Uh, and he's going to go down to, uh, yeah, about 15% after the Leftovers and the Poison. Now, the thing here is, I don't want to be in with Mudsdale, because Rotom's a problem. So I'm going to switch out, regardless of what he clicks. If he clicks Toxic, Flamethrower, Drain Punch, it doesn't matter. I'm not making a prediction here. I just want to make sure that I'm not in with Mudsdale as this thing goes down. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into my Zapdos, which I know can revenge this with HP Ice. I could also choose to Roost, but I don't want my Zapdos to catch a Toxic. So he's going to go for Flamethrower. He's going to bring me down a little bit. And uh, I'm going to uh, not get Leftovers, because I don't have Leftovers, thanks to being Charty Berry for the... Uh, for the Lando and it's uh, Stone Edge. Uh, so I'm going to go for the HP Ice here. I'm going to knock this thing out. I do not want to catch a Toxic. He could miss, but I don't want to take that chance. Obviously, a healthy uh, Zapdos would have been pretty nice uh, at this point. His Como is now down. He now has two Mons down on his side. That took a while. Uh, he's going to go into uh, Karama, which is the, uh, the Roserade. It's going to take Rocks, and I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. I'm going to get right on out of here, and I'm going to sack off my Mudsdale at this point. Now that his Rotom's not in, I don't care. Uh, if he goes for Sludge Bomb, I'll take it. 
And if he decides to sludge bomb again, I could get off an earthquake, and I don't think he wants that on one of his biggest offensive threats left. So he's going to go for the sludge bomb. I can obviously take this attack, and uh, it does a good amount of damage, but it's uh, it's not very effective. So I'm able to take the next one as a result, uh, and he has to uh, kind of be wary of earthquake slash uh, toxic. So I'm going to fire off a toxic again because I don't want the Rotom coming in for free, uh, and we are going to uh, catch a Giga Drain right here. And I'm really glad that I saw Giga Drain because this pretty much tells me that the Roserade is more than likely not uh, carrying Leaf Storm, and this is going to be pretty big for later in the game. So now I'm going to go into my Lopany, and uh, I'm going to see right here my HP goes down from 47 down to 38 from rocks. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go for the facade because nothing on his team takes it, and he actually decides to sack off his Rotom, which I was really surprised about. Uh, I did not expect this thing to come in and be the sack. Facade is easily going to take this thing out. It's stronger than uh, than high jump kick. Down goes the Rotom, and I'm going to take a little bit of Toxic. Take another 9%, uh, 9 HP once again, excuse me. Same as the rocks. So now the Swallow comes in. The Swallow is obviously a little bit of an issue, but this is why I kept the Milotic so high, was because I know that the Swallow is not specs. And I can switch into Asuna, I can take the Boom Burst, I can take whatever he goes for, and then I can just recover it off. And right now, because his Rotom is now gone, I don't have to worry about him getting up a sub, toxicking, and pain splitting everything. So I was actually really surprised that Tom sacked his Rotom. He's going to go out into his Roserade, and because I saw Giga Drain earlier, uh, and I actually looked away from my DS uh, when uh, when he went from, from, for Giga Drain, it's only because I saw him recovering health that I knew it was Giga Drain. But because I saw that, I know he probably doesn't have Leaf Storm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull the trigger. Finally this season, I pulled the trigger at the right time. He goes for Giga Drain, and down goes the Ros Roserade because we click Mirror Coat. Boom! Goodbye, Karama. And uh, now all that's left is the Meloetta and the Swallow. So Swallow's still looking like a, like a pretty big threat. I can still take a Boom Burst with Zoroark, so that's a really, really good thing. Uh, however, the Meloetta is... Um is probably Assault Vest, so it can probably take two Dark Pulses from my Zoroark, so that I'm kind of worried about. Uh, I'm going to let my Milotic go down here to the uh, to the Swallow, as uh, now I'm going to get in my Zoroark, uh, and I'm going to go for a uh, for Dark Pulse. So this is actually Zoroark, it's not Zapdos, obviously, and I know that I can take a Boom Burst, so I need to force out the Swallow, I need to put it in range of Fake Out uh, from my Megalopony, which does max 47. So... He's going to go into his Meloetta. He's going to take rocks again. And I'm going to see that this Dark Pulse actually bounces off. This is crazy. Uh, the Meloetta has a chance to live the next one. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm actually going to get out of here. I'm going to go into my Zapdos. I'm going to sack it off. And because I've been monitoring my Lopanese HP, I know for a fact that I have two switch-ins, uh, including one round of Toxic. So I'm going to go into Lopany after my Zapdos goes down to the Hyper Voice. Uh, I'm going to go into Reen here. And uh, if I would have uh, known that he, he was going to go for a Hyper Voice, I would have just stayed in with Zorar because I knew I outsped and a Hyper Voice wouldn't have killed me. Only Focus Blast would have, but I couldn't risk the Focus Blast. So I'm going to go for Facade. Down goes the Meloetta. I take another 9 HP of damage, and I go down to 11. And now he's going to bring back in the bird. Now... I could stay in and just win with Zoroark. The problem is, if he crits Boom Burst on my Zoroark, I lose. I don't have Sucker Punch. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm 100% convinced this thing is Scarfed. I have had no confirmation of this yet, but I'm 100% sure it's Scarfed. So he's going to go for Boom Burst. I'm going to see the damage once again on the Zoroark. Uh, what I was worried about the most was Protect from this thing on my Fake Out, and then I would die to Toxic on my Lopany. But he's going to go for another Boom Burst. Down goes my Zoroark, and Lopany is going to come back in at 2 HP <laughs> and be able to revenge the Swallow with Fake Out. And we are going to win this game 1-0 against the San Jose Sharpedos. Tom, what an amazing game. Honestly, it's so sick. Uh, it came down to 2 HP on my Megalopony. Uh, Lop actually got four kills. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's the kill leader now with 17 kills despite our record being four and six plus uh minus 10 uh we still have the kill leader among the gba 
Uh, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. I checked the, the sheet. Not everything on the sheet is updated uh, on our own personal sheet, so uh, I could be wrong about that. Thundee or Nihiligo could have more kills than Lopany, but regardless, I'm sure that Lop is in, th in the top five, and that on its own with such a horrible record of four and six minus ten uh, is, uh, is speaking volumes about the Mon on its own. I think I built the team around it incorrectly, uh, and I know what I did wrong now, so I'm really glad that I know that for future uh, reference. Lop is still amazing in Draft League format guys don't don't get me wrong lop yes it's better prepped for now but it's still a monster and uh you saw what it did there it just kept getting kills with facade uh it was ridiculous it killed the masharna it killed the meloetta uh the rotom as well as the swallow so I believe Milotic and Zapdos got the other two kills with HP Ice and Miracote. So Miracote was, was a huge, huge play. Wonder if that's going to be in top plays this week. But uh, really great game to Tom. Guys, definitely go and check out Tom. Tom's an awesome guy. I talk with him all the time. Uh, he's super cool. He's been... Uh, uh, sort of running the uh, the GBA, sort of running the uh, the GBA analyst team. Definitely running the analyst team. He's a, he's the head of it, um, and he's a, he's been doing a great job throughout all of these seasons that he's been around. So please go and check him out. He definitely deserves some love on his side. His link will be in the description down below. Uh, if you guys do enjoy our little winning streak, then make sure to leave a like down below for me as well. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the battle. You guys are doing great on the comments. Uh, I'm loving the comments from everybody. Honestly, uh, very very supportive. Uh, love you guys. Guys, thank you for sticking with me despite this terrible season uh, that we've been having. Despite that, we're not in the bottom or anything. We're, we're actually, like, I think fifth from last or sixth from last at this point. So uh, not too bad, but uh, but no, definitely uh, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, guys, if this is your first time on the channel. I uh, would really love that. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.